Welcome to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am P.D. Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating a slideshow for Drupal 7, just like this on the kingsofchaos.ca site. So you'll see here, as soon as you visit their main page, they've got a slideshow that goes through a bunch of different images that uh, advertise their specific uh, t-shirts. As well, you'll see here we've got some floated uh, text, which is actually the title for the image. Um, and the image itself has a small pager here. Um, which you can float over to see any specific image and if you float over an image itself it will pause and you can actually click on it to go to the specific uh, product page. Uh, so that's uh, what we're going to create. Let's go ahead and we'll dive right into it. So first things first, we're going to actually need to create uh, some images on our site that we're going to use as a slideshow. So we'll go ahead and create a specific content type for that. And this content type I'm just going to call uh, front page slideshow. Um, images specifically uh, to be displayed on the, oh, I can't type page. These will not be published by default. And I'll explain why in a second. Obviously, we don't want typos on our site. So we'll call this uh, image description actually image name All right optional is fine so on published and promoted we don't want those the reason why we don't want those is because all these are going to be as images so we don't want Drupal to create nodes that people can find and look at when the node is only going to be an image with a name um, just a little bit redundant these are specifically going to be for advertising purposes on our front page uh, slideshow so we don't want anybody to be able to access them so we're not going to publish them that won't stop us from being able to display them using views because we can distinguish between published and unpublished, obviously. So we'll go ahead and we're going to close off comments, all the rest of it, just in the event that somehow someone gets there. Um, and again, menus, those are, you can take that off because we're not going to put them in menus, but if you wanted to, you could. So we'll go ahead, save and add fields. Now, we're going to actually remove the body. Uh, because for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm not going to use it. It is possible if you wanted to, to not use the um, the title in your slideshow, but use the body and then have a kind of a nice wide image with the body right beside it. That's kind of like a description, a bit of a teaser for an article or whatnot, if you wanted to do that. Um, but again, beyond the scope of this tutorial. So we're going to call this the uh, slideshow image. And this is going to be an image. Save it as an image. So it's going to be public destinations, so that's fine. The reason why we didn't choose a default image is because we're going to make this always required. Uh, so we'll go ahead, the file structure will be in slideshow. So that when we upload, it'll be sites, default files, slash slideshow. So we know that where all of our images are. We'll enable the alt in the title field. Good SEO to do this. Um, I'm pretty sure we can make sure that these are enabled when we do the slideshow, but be honest, I haven't done it in a while, so and I didn't check that when I was running through preparing for this. We're only going to have one value uh, because each node is going to be a specific image, so that's fine. Public, again, no default, so we'll go ahead and save those settings. Now, minor thing here, I like to have the slideshow image first because we don't actually create the name until we know what images we're uploading. Um, so, minor thing, but I would suggest you do that. The other thing, we're going to go, oops, not edit. We're going to go manage display. So we're going to be uploading some massive images in this tutorial and uh, you can't really see to make sure that they're uh, formatted properly unless we go ahead and we scale this image. So we'll call it a uh, large we'll link the image to uh, nothing because I was looking for original, but that's not there. So we'll go update. If you had color box installed, you could link the image to the original, but again, you're not publishing these. So it doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead and save. Now we'll be able to see it when we actually upload them. Uh, it will just be this massive picture that doesn't fit on the screen. So let's go ahead and create some content. We're gonna go ahead, add front page slideshow. I'm gonna choose our Bailey picks here, uh, or Susie, so we'll go with the first one. And we'll call this Susie uh, Relaxing. Right, so we can go ahead and save. All this is fine, no revision, no path settings. So one sidebar here, if you were publishing these and you wanted to create the URL path settings, I would suggest you go to drupal.org slash project slash path auto. 
Um, and then so that all of your paths aren't, you know, your site slash content slash whatever, you could create uh, images slash and then whatever your path for this specific one would be. And you would find that under search metadata. And once you have path auto installed, there would be another option here to create those patterns. Um, something that I do commonly in all most video my tutorials, uh, especially if you look at Ubercart, I think Ubercart two or three uh, goes through setting up path auto. So now we see our image is uploaded. So we have little Susie. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video tutorial, upload a whole bunch more, and then we'll reconvene and uh, continue on with the video tutorial. No point in you seeing me upload four or five images. So we'll see you in a sec. Okay, great. So I've uploaded five. And now before we actually go ahead to setting up views, what we're gonna do is just go to configuration, media, image styles and I'll walk you through the image style that I created. The reason why I'm doing this is because my images that I uploaded aren't specifically banner images for my slideshow. I'm gonna have Drupal resize them um, on the site automatically rather than me having gone ahead and uh, created specific images. There's plus, there's you know positives and, benefit and negatives to both. Um, positive, if you actually created the slideshow, is you don't need this uh, and your, your images will be specifically defined the way that you want them. Um, the negative to that is again a little bit more time consuming and but you do have control over your site the positive to having drupal resize them is that it's all done automatically you don't have to worry about it you have your image you throw it up um, you're not too fussed about the specific fine game controls the downside to that is you're not really sure how your images are going to turn out when you crop it these are massive images that i had from a camera so uh, you can imagine that the size of them is pretty big and then i'm going to be scaling them down i don't know exactly how they're going to turn out um, but I know that, you know, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll have the image that I want to portray. So the first thing that I did is I chose a, a styling effect, uh, and that was to scale. And so when I did that, I scaled it to 700 wide. And the reason why I did that is because I know my site, if I were creating this, would be about 960. And then I would have 240 for my sidebar, right? And then I would have, you know, plus or minus 10 uh, on each side. So that's where 700 comes in. Um, again, if you've gone ahead and you've created all your uh, layouts and everything, you should know what size you're looking for so you can scale to that specific width. So you would uh, update the effect. You don't have to add a height because we're only scaling one, right? So when we go back, I added a crop. And my crop would take my, uh, my width that I know is going to be 700 and it's going to crop it to 200. The anchor itself, where it's going to position the picture, is going to be from the middle. So that's what I've done there. I know there is the possibility to scale and crop together. Uh, the reason why I don't do that is just an old habit from Drupal 6. Sometimes I would run into problems, um, and so I just like having the controls different. Um, but again, totally up to you if you want to go ahead and do that. So now that I know I have banner style, we can go ahead and set up our modules. So we're going to go over to uh, you know our module setup page here, and I'm going to show you what I went ahead and downloaded. So to save a bit of time, I went ahead and got the modules that I needed. So obviously we need views. And for views, we need to have um, chaos tools for this specific uh, video tutorial. So you'll need views, chaos tools, view slideshow, and then the view slideshow itself will come with views cycle. Additionally, what you need to get is the libraries module. Uh, so I'll show you here, drupal.org slash project slash libraries. And all libraries is, is uh, an API. So you're gonna download that module and when you do that, you have to go to your sites all folder and create a modules folder. So you, you typically have modules, themes, now you're gonna have libraries. So in doing that, we're gonna go over to the views slideshow page itself and check out the documentation because there are a couple steps here that are in addition to typically installing new modules. So at this stage, we're gonna assume that you've gone ahead, you've installed chaos tools, views, um, view slideshow and the libraries API. You set up the folder for libraries and the sites all folder. Um, so now we're going to be installing 3.x and the installation here, it tells you you actually have to go ahead and you have to download a jQuery cycle plugin. So I've gone ahead and done that, but I'm gonna walk through it with you. So you'll click on this link and you're gonna get the uh, jQuery cycle all latest min JS. The min obviously minimized. So you'll go ahead and you'll download that. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do it. Once you download that, you're gonna to have to rename it to jQuery cycle all dot min dot JS. So I haven't done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
And then when you do that, you're going to install it, and we're going to place it into the Sites All Libraries folder, but in a, another folder called jQuery.cycle. So I haven't created that, so we'll go ahead and go new jQuery.cycle. Here's my previous file, and I have to rename this. So I've gone ahead and done that, and dropped it into the folder. And then that's it. So now when we go to actually create our slideshow, we should see that option there in views. So let's go back to our site and see if we've done everything correctly. Views, add a view. We're gonna call this front page slideshow. Uh, you can add a description if you'd like. So this will, this, this will cycle to specific image nodes uh, on the front page, right? So we're gonna show content of types, front page slideshow. Newest first, doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna create a page. Um, we'll just call this welcome, right? And this is gonna be home. Um, and then we would update our site after. I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna actually do this as a slideshow of fields, images to display. This will be unlimited because uh, I don't know how many images you're gonna use. We're gonna use a pager uh, and we'll go ahead and continue and edit. Great, so now we've got the title. So we're gonna have to go ahead and add our image it should be under content and we'll look at slide show image. So we go ahead and add that to the display. We don't want a label. Uh, we want the image, we want the banner style. Now, if we want to link this to something, we could do that, but we're not going to. Uh, in our style settings, we don't need to do anything. Rewrite results. We should be fine. The only one thing. Yeah, let's just go ahead and we'll apply that to all this place. Okay, now obviously we're not getting anything down here. That's because we have published as yes. So what we're gonna do is remove that filter. Now, well, we're supposed to be seeing our image. Obviously something's going wrong. There we go. So the reason why the delay was, was because obviously this is being done dynamically. So uh, I created the image and now we can see that. What we need to do is go to our settings for our slideshow. And when we scroll down here, we're gonna choose cycle, we're gonna fade. We'll pause on hover. And you'll see here, we've got a whole bunch of other options if we wanted to do some crazy uh, customization, but again, we're not gonna be doing that, so um, I would encourage you to check those out if you'd like to. And what we're going to do is add a pager at the bottom, way to the pager. So we're gonna fields. And what I've forgotten to do is add an extra field. So we'll just, we'll click apply it all because we've got to add one more thing. So what we want is if we go to Kings, we want to have these little bullets down here at the bottom. So we do that by adding a global counter. So we'll go to global, view result counter, apply that. Don't want that. Starting value is going to be one. So we'll go ahead and apply that. Okay, so there we see we have the one. So that's good. So when we go to settings here, down at the bottom, we're gonna say global counter, apply to all displays. And then we see we have all of them, right? Now what we have to change here is because it's showing us which one we're on as well as one, two, three, four, five. What I forgot to do is in the global view result counter, it's exclude from display. 
And then we're going to rearrange. So we're going to have the content, the title, and then the result. So we'll go ahead and save this. And then lastly, in this video tutorial, what we're going to do is go to site information. And our home page is going to be home because that's what we created in the view. Go back to the home page. And here is our slideshow. Obviously, we still got a bit of work to do in the CSS because right now we still have this pager down here at the bottom, which is really ugly. It's all numbers. Um, and we don't have this kind of nice looking um, pager as well as the title up in kind of the image floated um, and transparent. So in the next video tutorial, I'll walk you through some of the CSS that we can do to actually make this look a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, and then you'll have your view slideshow. But if you already know how to do that, don't worry about it. You have your slideshow set up here in Drupal. You can just go ahead and move on. So I hope that helps. Uh, if Again, if you have any questions, comments, leave a comment on, uh, on the video tutorial. Uh, it always helps to leave it there rather than trying to find a way to email me directly because everyone will be able to see the feedback that we discuss when you leave a comment. So uh, it helps everybody. It kind of avoids me getting inundated with emails. But again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave a comment. Let me know. I uh, appreciate the feedback. And so we'll see you in the next video tutorial.